question. Daryl, yeah, and your question? Yes. Okay, so the question is, uh, I assume you've done a few developments and uh, what was your first one and have they gotten easier? So yes, I have done multiple developments. My first development was buying two adjoining properties in the suburb of Balmoral actually, not, not far at all. It was the corner of Riding Road and uh, uh, Orchard Street. And those two properties, I purchased one in 2004, one in 2005, and together they gave me the right zoning and enough land to get a development approval for five townhouses. I kept them as two rental properties during the time I owned them, and I was able to get the approval and just resell the, the properties as, uh, as they were. I didn't touch them, I didn't demolish anything, I didn't build anything, just simply with the approval. I resold that and, and I made a significant capital gain uh, just by doing that. So that was my first uh, official development. And do they get easier? Um, let's say that it depends on the individual property. Some properties have certain characteristics that make them uh, more compatible with developing, but others have challenges. And, and that might be things like slope of the land might be the right or wrong way. It might be that services are in a, an awkward to get to spot. But the good thing is, and what I've learnt as well, is I don't have to be an expert on exactly all of those intricacies, but having the right people around me, like town planners to talk to, other consultants who are in their day job focusing on that style of development that I might be considering, they'll help out. So it gets easier when you get the right team of people around you. When you're first starting and you think, well, I don't know even what I have to do, what does it cost, you know, how long does it take? Uh, that's definitely a hard starting point, but as you build the team around you, it, it gets a lot easier. Um, so to answer the question, um, if you get past your first one, uh, and it, it will get easier. Um, and just be careful what you buy too. Not every property that's advertised for its development potential is going to be a, a wonderful deal that'll make you money. There's a, a lot of people who um, try and get a premium price when they think there's a development opportunity. So you also have to be careful um, as well. But, yeah. um, and, and in fact, uh, has any, well, can I just have a show of hands? Are there other people who've been through the development application process in the room? And, and let me ask the question back. Have you found it gets easier after the first deal? Or does anyone want to volunteer an answer? It was a lot easier than renovating. <laughs> easier than renovating, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, renovations sometimes open a whole can of worms, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Just okay. knowing what you need to know to move forward is actually a step towards moving forward. So keep that in mind. Um, so, uh, yeah. Okay. So how did I go about getting finance for the different things that I did? I've always used for all of my financing so far just purely ordinary residential finance, mostly through the big banks. And uh, when I was after that that first purchase with the vendor finance. Uh, after that, I was then having to prove my income, like, like normally you would. By the time 2002 came along, I realised that low-doc loans were available, and that actually helped me to purchase more properties, because with low-doc loans, as a lot of you are aware, you're not proving exactly what you earn, you are declaring what you believe you're earning, because normally you don't have all your financials up to date. So low-doc loans, open the door to me borrowing more. And, and one of the things that I thought of is, if what I'm doing is I'm prepared to sell a property every so often, then part of my income is actually the profit I will make from selling a property. So in my low doc loan declaration, it enabled me to feel I could be a little bit more flexible because I knew I was going to add extra income each year through being willing to, to sell as I go. So, so financing for me has always been residential, initially fully verified, then moving on to low doc. When I got to the development type sites, I was still able to buy them using residential finance to start with. And um, with developing, at this point in time, I've done subdivisions where I have not only got the approval but completed them. I've done approvals for townhouses, but 
despite all that, I haven't actually gone and constructed anything. So interestingly, um, I've, I haven't used a builder at all to, to do anything with what I've done, but I still certainly consider myself a developer because I'm adding value by finding a better use for that property and then putting it back on the market for somebody else um, and, and leaving some money in it for them too. And just while I'm on that topic, that's a really important point that if there's a chance to take all of the profit out of something and, and take advantage of someone, I would never do that. I just feel that with what I do, because I've chosen property as my vehicle, I want to make it that everyone who deals with me has a good experience and that means that they are happy with what they buy off me or if I buy off them, they're actually happy too. And if I think they're asking a price that's too high, I'll, I'll justify it quite honestly. And it's, uh, but I don't try and take advantage of every last dollar out of any deal. I think that approach will perhaps set you up more for uh, stress than it will for profits uh, in the long term. Yeah. Um, so have I answered that question enough with finance? Yeah, okay. Um, and anyone else? Yeah. Set out with a strategy in mind first and then find the property or okay. find the property you <coughs> acquire yeah. a strategy? Okay, um, so Simon's asked, do, uh, do I set out with a particular strategy in mind or do I just find the property and then like think, well, what strategy can I use? That, that's the question. Personally, I do have some, some core uh, fundamental principles that, that I like and for me, uh, and this, this is just me personally, I, I, I'll share some of those with you but it uh, doesn't mean other options aren't also valid, it's just what I chose. I personally chose never to buy somebody else's brand new property. I just figure if I do that and I'm paying full market price, there's not much I can do to add value because it's already at its best. And once I rent it out, well, it's not even new anymore, so I, I don't do that. So I've got a rule such as that. I also love land content. If I can buy a property that's got at least twice the minimum land area that you would normally get in a suburb, I go for that as a preference because I figure well, it might have more development potential either now or in the future. Um, or it may just be that my capital growth uh, will be slightly better because people, over time, I know there's a trend towards smaller and smaller living, but then there's also uh, people who like the more classic, bigger blocks. So, so I've always liked land. And I feel too that um, land is the thing that we are in limited supply. There's, there's not really more land popping up. So, so that's worked well for me. Um, but I also do, just look for any opportunity. I, I, what I tend to do is focus on suburbs that are familiar with, uh, that I'm familiar with, and that's, that's usually only, say, six or, or eight suburbs. It's not a whole big area. I keep uh, alerts on realestate.com.au. I specify a minimum land size because I want to know that I'm getting the type of size that I want. But if I see something come in that uh, it looks like it might be interesting, I'll, I'll follow it up and, and then look into how can I make this work. And I think the, the way to find a deal is to be willing to look, and not only look, but place offers. Because you won't see an advertised property that's going to give you absolutely everything you want and, and all the boxes ticked and it'll just be waiting for you. If it's that good, someone else is going to be very quick to grab it. What you'll find is, There'll be an opportunity there, but you may have to peel off a few layers and, and look a bit deeper to find it. So, so I have a few core things that are important to me, but having said all that, I still would buy something that even falls outside of that if I could get it, say, 20 or 30% under market value and think, well, I can't really go wrong with this either. So, yeah, yeah. Does anyone want to add one of their own, um, let's say, rules? Like, let's share, because I don't want to be the one answering all the questions. Um, but let's say, have we got some people here have certain rules about what they buy or, or strategies that, that they've found really successful or um, any volunteers on that? Um, 